ครับIt's actually funny you say that, Garmage. I uh, I believe I've made it through three fourths of that bag. I think at this point, I think it's become my new favorite coffee. <laughs> Yeah, I've had a lot of coffee since March, basically. Hello to everyone, by the way, who is uh, waiting patiently and is getting situated. He just dies, says. Hey, Anne, how are you? Garmage, of course. Uh, thank you, D. Clairman, for the tier one. 15 months, that's impressive, yeah. Oh, I, I have, and it's it, uh, this last week um, between because I didn't talk about it much, but between the uh, the funeral last week and then the rest of the Reapercon stuff, obviously the closer we get to um, September, right? The the more and more and more chaotic it gets. It gets to be real crunch time. So yeah, yeah, and I am I am actually very sleepy. <laughs> However, it's an enjoyable sleepy because you know. I enjoy what I do. Because it's Monday and I didn't put my pro tips intro back on. Hold on. 
We had to have that. We, we couldn't do without the sploosh. All right, so, hi guys. It's Monday. You can tell it's Monday because I had deactivated my sploosh and forgot to put it back on. Hi, yeah, and it was deactivated because, of course, we were doing the AMA on Friday, so if you didn't catch the AMA, do go and catch it on the VOD or on as the YouTube. Um, and uh, we covered a lot of interesting things, and we had some fun, but, of course, I swap back and forth from camera to face when I do the AMA, so that's why I deactivated my little intro and forgot. I'm actually doing all right. I've, uh... I, I started uh, using a new, you guys know about knee pillows, like when you sleep, you put a pillow between your knees and it helps align your spine. I've been having more back issues lately, probably because I've been painting so much. So I, uh, I ordered an actual knee pillow and um, started using it last night and it definitely, I slept pretty well. So maybe there's something in it. My back was a little sore, but that's probably just realignment woes because it was definitely unhappy with me prior to that. So everybody with back issues, you know, take note. My, um, my sister-in-law is a chiropractor and she's the one who had first uh, recommended it to me. Oh, all right, Krispies. Awesome. Go for the wraith. Go for the wraith. Also oh no, it told you that Reaperland was on Chef of Love? That's bad. Are we Reaperland, Justin, this morning? No, that was, yeah. So what happened was when I when I went to go refresh the uh, restream, it defaulted to on, and since you were supplying a stream already, it mm -hmm. just kicked it out to what we had on Friday. Oh, I see. So I had to bring it down, reset it, all that kind of stuff. Sid, we, um, they make them with I straps. Said... They make them with straps. Sorry, I had to answer a question. It was very important. Yeah, no problem. I actually use one of those pillows. I love it. Oh, do you? Good, um, good. I do. It's. I'll never go back. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, but I need to take a, a phone call real fast. Okay, so. great. But yeah, Sidney, they make them with a strap. I don't need them with a strap because I find that um, I just if I'm gonna like resituate at night, I wake up enough to resituate the pillow. And if I and usually if I'm sleeping well, I actually stay in one position for hours at a time, so it, I don't have a problem with that. But they make them with with uh, elastic. I think we velcro the strap over your legs so you can make it comfortable. Um, so yeah. So yeah, yeah. All right, so we got a wraith. Like, should we just start working on our wraith this morning? I feel like I'm low. I feel like my camera needs to like get better, like more Anne. More Anne, please. More Anne camera. I, I go back and forth between this whole, oh no, I'm, I'm too high, or oh no, I'm too low. And then who's driving this bus comes into play again, you know, as I try to adjust myself. Let's see here. Ta-da, there I am. There we are. Now I'm, now I'm here, here, here. I still feel like I'm a little bit up too high in the frame now, but mm, who cares? I'm probably overthinking it. I tend to overthink. Trust me. Alrighty, let's go and do some stuff. Wraithlet! All right, so our beautiful little wraithlet um, is, uh, let's get a little zoomies. 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 And then zoomies. Zoomies. Oh, I'm out of focus because everything else took over. The problem with uh, autofocus is you've got to make sure you're filling the frame so that it focuses. Doing ginger what ginger hair like like red hair stuff i think i did a red hair thing for the patreon actually <laughs> never enough and i don't know i'd argue with that <laughs> ah yes yes yeah um it depends on what i got i mean i did like it on the fire giant recently the fire giant i mean it was very quickly blocked in with unusual colors but it worked um, and I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure I have red hair somewhere on the Patreon. So you might want to check on that. Um, it should be, you should be able to search for it because it, Patreon, uh, implemented a search thing. So you should be able to search for painting red hair. It should be one of my keywords or for red hair. Uh, it'll either be painting red hair or red hair. Um, but, uh, this color, this is a pretty little phantom glow because we're painting a phantom and she's glowing. So I'm using it. Um, if you do not have the glow colors, they are very nice. Runic Glow is a magenta purple, um, pinkish color. I almost did that. If you're going for more of a spectral uh, glowing thing, then you could use Runic Glow. And then there's Red Neon Glow, which is a red-orange color. Um, so yeah, so the glow colors are great. They do not actually glow in the dark. They are just meant to do things like this. Um, actually, we have a red hair triad, for those of you who don't know. 
So Alpha um, Reaper does do a red hair triad that I formulated, and it's uh, 9... 9241, which is Auburn Shadow, 9242, which is Carrot Top Red, and 9243, which I believe is, um, it's, it's like Orange Highlight, um, or Highlight Orange, I don't remember, one of those, kind of like that, but uh, that triad is very good, I mean, it's it's made to do this out the gate, if you want more of a Auburn color, then you start with the shadow and work up, if you want more of a, a you know, a standard red hair, start with Carrot Top, work down and up, yeah. Um, Spectral Glow is going to be lighter and bluer, I think, Embers. I mean, they're very, they're kind of similar, but I think it's greener, actually. I'd have to, I don't have Spectral, like, right next to me, but Spectral's in the Bones line, right? So, essentially, it's very, it's meant to go with these other glows. Like, I made these other glows after I made that glow for uh, Bones, and I thought, oh, well, I could do more of this because there are other variants that I'd like to do. Um, yeah, so, yeah, Spectral's a bright turquoise, so you've got more green in it. Um, but yeah, these are all very saturated colors. Um, actually, Rathmore, that's not the red hair triad, but you could use it similarly if you wanted kind of a chestnut. Yeah, if you want more of a brown red. But the red hair triad that I actually created was 9242, 9, 9243, 9241. Um, so yeah, you could utilize the uh, definitely mahogany brown and chestnut brown and uh, rust are are definitely like usable for red hair. Absolutely. In fact, before the red hair triad came out, I used to use rust brown. Well, it's an, I mean, you could use it for red hair. It's just not a red hair triad. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I used to base coat with rust brown if I wanted, like, that orange dwarf beard kind of look. Um, but, yeah, what will happen is because the chestnut brown is uh, much more brown and much less red uh, than the others is uh, you're going to get more of a brownish red, which is certainly something that's out there. I mean, chestnut hair. Yeah. Now, I wouldn't call it misinformation. I'd call it extended information because you certainly can use those colors for red hair. It just gives you a different effect. So it depends on how red-orange you want your red hair, how vibrant you want your red hair. Um, lava being, there's just the three, and they're in a triad together, except for the one in Bones. If you, I mean, if you just search Reaper Paints Glow, you should come up with it. It's like four, I think it's a total of four colors, counting Spectral. But yeah, um, Otter Mama just gave you the SKU for the Glow, glow Colors Triad. I love them. I use them a lot because they're very saturated colors. One of the ways to desaturate a color to make it less bright is to add white. But out of all of the ways of desaturating a color, adding a touch of white still keeps a lot of the vibrancy of the color. And so it gives you something like this that can come off as a glow. It's very hard to make something glow if it's at all muddy or has any black pigment or brown pigment in it. It just doesn't look like a light at that point. So... That's why the glow colors are all like very vibrant pigments and they have no black or brown in them. So, oh, school is for red hair tried. Thank you, Otter Mama. Not the glows. Apologies. I don't know the, I have the, all the item numbers memorized, but I do not have the triad numbers memorized, which is purely because we never, I, we don't package in, or we didn't package in paint. And so I have no reason to memorize the triad colors. I'm just going to mix up. Um, kind of a couple of different, uh, puddles just to work with stuff. I'm doing six drops of, uh, you know what? I'm going to do eight drops of Phantom because I'm going to be blending it into, um, uh, the corporeal stuff that we're doing. Oh, you're right. Golden glow is a seasonal glow. That's actually my, uh, it's inexcusable that I forget that color because that's actually Anne's color. Like the same way that corporeal shadow is Caporia's color. Um, and uh, rich green is Jessica Rich's color. Uh, I Golden Glow was my color that I created for me because I really wanted it. So, And Golden Glow of all of them is the most natural glow color. So it's great for candlelight, lantern light, stuff like that. Morning. Strange. How's it going? It is Monday, we've decided. For, for Justin, it is definitely Monday. He sounds like it's Monday. I'm pretty chipper for Monday. Though it is always hard after the weekend where you feel like you didn't get enough weekend and you're just like, 
just running a little bit behind on Monday morning because you're just like, ah, I want it to still be the weekend. I'm going to mix up our happy colors. So I'm mixing up a mix of four drops of my Phantom Glow and two of white and a, and a, uh, and a pure Phantom Glow. I'm going to want these as I work uh, normal colors into this wraith. I'm going to do the difficult one. I'm going to go for black and uh, fade her into uh, like black clothing because she is a wraith. So in keeping with what Bob and Julie came up with, and I'm sure Julie probably worked on this a little. Bob and Julie, like, they'll hand each other their figures to work on when they're sick of them. So I'm pretty sure there is a little Julie on here, even though most of it is Bob. Although Bob says now their styles are really so similar, so close to each other because they've been trading back and forth for so long that he has a hard time remembering like what parts of which models he did and which parts Julie did. Uh, yeah, brown liner is... Uh... Oh, you're asking Sidby. Sidby might use a different brown liner, although the only brown liner I know of is the one we make. But if so, it's item number 9064, and it's wonderful. What was I using it? Oh, yeah, I actually just, I entered in my ReaperCon class yesterday. You might have gotten the CC on my email, Justin. I asked for it to be taught on Twitch during the con, but I don't know um, how that's progressing or if that's still a thing, if we're only doing Zoom or if we're going to do Twitch. And Justin's probably still on the phone. Oh, okay, it's Reaper's Brown Liner. Good, yay! And thank you. Thank you for the compliment on the Brown Liner. Uh, no, Strange, this mini did not come translucent. This is a metal model, actually. Um, so it's white metal. It's not bones. Uh, and you could tell because of the item number and also because of the Dark Heaven Legends. Um, that is our metal line. I decided that I wanted to do some metal figures uh, because that was Reaper's stock and trade for two decades. Um, and because I like the amount of detail and I like the feel of metal. Uh, it's been a long time since I worked on a metal figure. Um, it's, uh, it's a holiday color Jedi and Jared, or Je Jedi Ninja Druid. Uh, so it, since it's a seasonal color only, it's available in the holiday paint set. Uh, sometimes we give it out for our holiday, uh, goodie bag, but it has, I don't think it's been in a goodie bag for a while. Um, I'm already failing to memorize the new numbers, actually. The ones that Sadie made that uh, she uh, they were coming out with just as I left, I don't have memorized yet. Yeah, exactly. Jedis need, like, more wardrobe variations. Sorry. Hey, Miss Anne. Yo! I uh, I did hear your what you were saying earlier. I was on the phone, but okay. uh, I could still hear what was going on. Um right. The to answer your question about the classes, that is actually a week that came up in the meeting today. Oh yeah, whether we're like going to do Zoom organ organization, yeah. Ah, okay. We we basically have a at this point a soft schedule. Yeah. Um, as of Friday that we okay. can now start working with, but we have a lot of moving parts right now to to kind of solidify stuff. But we're really close. Okay. All right. Well, if you already have a working schedule, then my uh, my class came in really late. So so did David's. So. I don't know what will oh, okay. happen. So so I'm definitely not we'll on that see. schedule. Yeah, I mean, I would far prefer to do uh, Twitch for my class. But what um, are we, are the classes being, um, I'll, I'll ask you about this afterwards, actually, since it's all like in pro work in progress and not finalized. The rest of you will have to uh, just wait. All right, so I'm going to start with tan skin, I think. And there's a reason um, that I'm starting with tan skin. I thought about going with a livelier color. But that would uh, be a little bit against... It's kind of like what I said about red hair and ghosts. If you use a color that's too alive, it can like look kind of wrong when you're looking... When you're trying to... It can convey the wrong visual information when you're trying to make her look dead. Um, I mean, if I really wanted to, I can make her skin really dead white. But I decided I'm going to go with a warmer skin color. I'm just going to probably bleach it out with a bit of white. And we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, the other reason I'm choosing tan skin is that it's somewhat translucent when I thin it down, which since I'm blending with the spectral color, will make it easier. Also, it's one of my favorite skin tones of all time. So, um, that's, uh, we don't know yet, Terry, 
We're not going to, we're not going to share questions. Uh, we, we've never recorded ReaperCon classes in the past. I will tell you that, but there has been talk of recording just a couple this time because it's virtual. Um, we don't, the problem is that as an instructor, especially if you make your living teaching, if you put all your content up online, then you've got no incentive, right? Like you've just devalued all your content for your people. So, um, you have to be careful if you're a freelance miniature painter that makes through living at this, like I do. Um, so you have to almost create content if it's going to be saved online, uh, create new content. Um, so, I mean, in the past there's been kind of like a, no, we won't do that, but now we might, but it's all up in the air and it's no guarantees, no guarantees. Who knows? Reaper, it's, it's Reaper's call. Hey, Motor City Ray, it's good to see you. All right, go have fun, Garmage. Uh, stranger always, yeah, yeah, it's just, you know, it's, it varies, the, it varies by the year and by who you're talking to, uh, Terry, so I'm not gonna, not gonna even think about guessing at it. I'm gonna thin down, just throwing some water into my, uh, tan skin. It will look really warm next to this, so we'll see. I want to thin it down. I might want to also add some white if I really want her skin pale, and I probably do, but I want to at least get a thin film of skin color first. So what we're doing here is we want to start uh, making her look like she's coming to life, or at least more corporeal, up around this area, which is the important area. Everything else, as you can see, is fading out towards spirit energy, and I'll highlight it with pure white as I go on, just like I have down here at the bottom where I'm doing the glow effect. Um, but up here, I want more of a fade into flesh color and natural color. Now I decided I'm actually going to do red hair on her, but I'm going to do goth red, which is one of the, one of the red that you, uh, can, what reds you can get away with on ghostly things. So I'll start with black and I'll bring it up toward crimson. So it, she'll be a, she'll be a goth girl, goth girl, red hair color. Um, uh, do, 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 do. Um, it depends, Strange, on if you're blending white into, you know, light into dark or dark into light. I mean, I go back and forth, so where I end my stroke is gonna be, like, where, what makes sense. So if you're blending, like, if you have a dark area up here and you're blending into a light area down here, then I would, if I've got light on my brush, I probably would go the opposite because I want the start of my stroke to be really thin so it's blending in. But then I also have to remember I have to blend this dark into that light. So it, yeah. wet blending, it's a free for all. Um, kind of use your common sense. And if I were you, if you're not sure, I would I would actually prime like a piece of paper or cardboard and uh, try it. Like play on the piece of cardboard until you get a sense of the best way to blend. Because you don't want to do it on the mini and then, you know, get frustrated because it's a small area and screw it up and, you know, throw the mini against the wall. You want to, you should probably try it out. Um, but yeah, it really depends. Hmm. I actually have not looked at the con minis, Jetta. This is something that happens when you're at Reaper. And this was true even when I was actually working on site. Is I wouldn't see any of the Reaper con minis until, like, it was the con. <laughs> because I was just so distracted by getting paint stuff done. So, okay, so we're starting to blend in some skin color here. I've thinned it down a lot. As you can see, it's very transparent. And that's good because that lets me start with some skin color and blend it out. And I have to decide if I'm going to make her entire torso um, skin colored or if I'm going to have it blending in. What you don't want to do necessarily is just start at a cutoff, right? You want to have, like, some spectral color on on everything. So I don't want to paint this torso, just block it in skin color. Then that won't convey a fade. It won't convey that she's becoming more corporeal as you go up. Um, doo -doo -doo. Oh, goose girl. Oh, that's right. We are doing some commoners, aren't we? I love, I like, um, townsfolk also. They have a lot of personality. So I am going to bring the skin tone up stronger for the top of her torso. And I'm probably also going to make it lighter. But for now, I'm just kind of um, blocking in a little bit and trying to fade it out. And if I, 
I can always adjust it. This is why I keep my spectral glow, like, uh, or my phantom glow open. So that if I do take up too much of some of this area with uh, non-phantom color, I can go back and uh, fade it in. Like, if I get some brush strokes and I lose some of my phantomy stuff. But you really want kind of a fade. So, I am... Yeah, I really want people to take some of these new townsfolk figures and do some awesome dioramas for Reapercon whenever we next have a Reapercon. I mean, you, obviously you could do one for this Reapercon, but I don't know what the nature of the painting competition is going to be. All right, she's got some cloth up here. I'm trying to tell, like, exactly how thick that cloth is. It kind of looks like it goes up all the way, and her midriff is bare, but then she's got a collar up here. So... It's going to be pretty solid up around that collar. I want her face to be pretty solid. So I'm just going to block this in in black. And even though it might be too strong at first, I can always highlight it with the spectral color if I want to uh, bring that out. Let's see here. This is where I'm going to kind of go slow also and... Uh, try to figure out where exactly I want her to be looking more um, more in this world and more I want her to be looking more out of this world. But I'm pretty sure I want her torso. Now I do need to fade out when I get to the arm here. So I do want to not make my black like a really solid line there, like I kind of left some brush strokes there. That'll make it a little easier to bring this uh, phantom glow back in. And you got to be really careful because you don't want these two to mix on your brush because the minute you've got some gray in that spectral glow, it ceases to look glowy. So I take my spectral glow, which I've thinned down a little bit, and I make it a little bit more solid. And then I've got to may probably want to thin that down just a little bit more. We're going to have to see. See how this works. <laughs> yes, I am here. Have you been busy, Mo busy Motor City, Ray? Um, yeah, you know, uh, I mean, when I do sheer cloth, I actually don't do it this way. I actually will paint it um, and then I'll glaze over it. I'll start glazing colors over it for sheer cloth. I think I did a, I think I, yeah, I did do a sheer cloth tutorial for the Patreon. Um, but, uh, but yeah, what I do with sheer is I, I do it. Sheer cloth for me uh, is more like my tattoo technique. And this is a little different. This, I'm not going to be glazing with this. I, this is probably going to be just layering unless I really need to bring something together or push it apart at the end. But in general, I want her to be very solid toward the middle and upper part of her body. So it's unlikely that I'll glaze the way that I do normally. Oh, new house. Woof. Well, thank you. I'm glad I'm your number one stop. Sweet. Hey, Skelsey. How's it going? All right. So the challenge here will be that I do have to actually show the fade in order for it to make sense. So this, if I go too far on the front here and it's all just opaque up in this area and you don't see a fade it's really not going to carry the effect so i think i'm going to have to bring my black out a bit onto the sleeves to show obviously that it is fading in um from the corporeal energy or the uh, non-corporeal energy the ghostly energy And I'm going to have to judge as I go. None of this is like uh, completely like set in stone though. Like if I really need to, even going over the black, um, I'll just have to take some pure white and lay it down to cover up that black if I want to really make more of a ghostly fading thing up there. I may also choose to take down everything down to here and fade her up from there to start my fade down here. It's not quite as effective as showing that her skin is also fading in, but we'll see. We may want that effect after all. 
it's much better if you can show all different parts of her fading in from the ether, so to speak. But yeah, big congrats on uh, New House. It's always exciting. So exciting. And I'm going to come out to this and uh, make her come out there. So let's do the fade on the sleeve. Let me block in her face. I definitely want her face to be all there, so that's easy. Yes, it's like new house, super exciting. Moving, sucking. Moving is terrible. Although these days I have so little stuff after I moved, relatively speaking. Not nearly as much stuff. Now, this is where I kind of regret having uh, made my tan skin so very thin. It's going to take a few coats to uh, bring it up on the face. But that's okay, because I probably want to bring it up a little lighter anyway. We'll see. I like starting with tan skin, even for pale skin, because I like to start dark and work up. And tan skin is a nice utility um, lighter skin tone. So if you're looking for a Caucasian skin tone... It's a good foundation. Let's see. Got to get under her neck, too. Maybe I'll get... Uh, keep going back and forth on whether I want to add white to it or not to bring it up a little bit. But mostly I'm going to be using layering to, um, to blend these guys together. Ooh, you got your own studio space, Motor City Ray. That is super cool. Gaston Corgi, hello. My ex is currently uh, dog sitting for two corgis. And so there, he has pictures of them all over Facebook. They are cute. I will give them that. Uh, we have, right now, Phantom Glow. The skin color is tan skin, and I'm going pure black with the black, because Wraith. Um, so I wanted to actually go that way. And I also knew that I was going to end up mixing a little bit of the Phantom Glow into the black, um... And vice versa so we'll we'll see how that works i could have gone with something like nightmare black but it wouldn't have necessarily gone as wraithy um so yeah and i may yet decide like i said to carry some of the black down here let's see here let's do that let's bring in a little bit of black down here And maybe I'll make it just a little bit fade in. Kind of going slow on this because, you know, I'm kind of making decisions as I go about um, how I want it, where I want the fade to be, how I want to do it, how I'm going to pull it off. We need to definitely suggest it on the front of the figure. So that means I, I needed a little bit more. Uh, of the black showing down here. But I have to be careful that I keep the fade effect. So we'll see. And like I said, I'm not really worried about an abrupt ending to the black here because I've got a lot of room here that I can blend. And if I really need to knock that black back I can grab actually I should grab right now some pure white definitely want to use pure white to suggest the energy and to, if you're um, trying to reclaim some uh, base color from the black putting white over the black and then painting your phantom glow over it is the most effective way to do so because the phantom glow is going to be much brighter over white Okay. 
Hey, ghost. Hey, what an appropriate name for what we're painting right now. Uh, wow, 10 month subscription. Grats. Thanks, ghost. That's super. You've been watching us for a long time. We thank you. So yeah, for those who missed it, we had an AMA on Friday, so you can go catch that um, on our uh, VODs here on Twitch and also over on YouTube, I think. Do you have it up yet, Justin? Uh, not on YouTube, no. Oh, okay. When will you have it, that it'll up? It'll likely, likely be by today. But, okay, good. Uh, our, our VODs actually on uh, Twitch seem to have more views than our YouTube channel anyway. Interesting. So. Interesting. All right, Probably so gonna... because the mm -hmm. VODs come with a chat so that people can kind of see what's going on in the chat. We don't often put that on the screen Oh, when recording a video. Oh, I didn't so I realize You definitely that. get more from the VOD than you get from the YouTube uh, Oh, video. interesting. Huh. That would argue that we should start putting it on screen for the... I guess yeah, that's... as long as we have the problem is the screen real estate is very valuable, right? Right, right. Especially when you're doing an instructional video, I can imagine. Well, I can do something about that and narrate a little better, probably. I mean, I could always change it and said and and do it more in a Corgi wants to know X kind of factor, which doesn't help anybody in the chat right now, but helps people watching later. All right, so I'm liking this a little bit more now. Bring in my black. Oh, Kiri, do not get restless, little doglet. Got to be a good girl. Got to settle down. We're streaming. Yeah, I'm going to actually put in the edge of the hood up here because I am going to keep that. Really working on just kind of building up the effect I want. So I'm like, okay, well, this is going to be solid. And so if this is solid, then it needs to be colored. And if it's ghostly, it needs to stay elsewhere. What are you doing, little dog? Investigating David's side of the room, apparently. He's not here, so she can sniff his things with impunity. What are you doing? You going to settle down for me? Yeah, come here. Get pettins. Good girl. Yeah, please settle down. No cute emergencies allowed. Yes, well, I can tell her that, but she might not listen. <laughs> Thank you, Crowley Hunter. Thank you. <laughs> Streaming ultra wide. Oh, sorry, dog father. I missed it. Uh, yeah, she's ethereal dog father, but I wanted to paint her as if she was becoming corporeal in one area. Um, that's kind of the whole point of this. I mean, otherwise, you, if you want a fully ethereal wraith, just paint her all like you painted this. Like, just bring everything um, up to white, like, where it's glowing most strongly. You probably want to do some higher drama up here um, and make it like this, where you've got the phantom glow shadows, and then you bring it up to pure white around here. Um, but, uh, yeah, I wanted to do her as if she was becoming corporeal. So as she fades in from the ether, uh, you're going to get actual strong color. Otherwise, painting ghost is the easiest thing in the world because you just honestly start with a phantom glow or a spectral glow or whatever you're going to use and just highlight it up to white all over and leave the original glow color in all the cracks as if it was liner. Um, you're done. It's the, it's the fastest thing in the world. It's why ghost armies are so fast to paint. <laughs> you're only working with two colors and maybe a blend in between the two. But it's much harder to do a fade in, especially when you're going white to black pretty much. So I wanted to talk about how you would do that because it's much more interesting than just painting the whole model as if it's like phantom glow and white. And I always like that kind of fading in kind of effect anyway, like the turning uh, to flesh from stone or vice versa that you can do that I see people sometimes try to execute like on living statues and stuff. This is the same kind of thing. All right, I'm going to bring this in and I'm going to fade it in. So pretty much now I'm just mapping out how I want this to look, like where I want my corporealness. I need to leave enough room for the fade to happen up here on top. So I'm just going to kind of leave a little jagged edge to show that I want my fade to start there. Oh, hi, Scrying Eye. Are you new? 
uh, yeah, you can absolutely ask questions. I try to watch the chat pretty close, and if I don't get it, somebody else will try to answer, and I'll usually see that answer, and then I can answer it in more uh, more detail. Actually, Scrying Eye is a six-month sub badge. So. Oh, are you? Oh, yeah. Well, then you just haven't chatted with us before. Well, welcome to the chat. But yeah, pe pepper me with questions. It gives me stuff to talk about while I'm uh, doing stuff. Yeah, Scrying Eye, that's... Uh, that's uh, though artist inks. Those those De La Rowney acrylic inks aren't real inks, so they're pretty safe to use to tint. Um, Corporeal Shadow is not. It is a ninety six hundred special edition color. However, you can get close to it by mixing Dragon Blue and Walnut Brown. You definitely need more Dragon Blue than Walnut Brown. All right, let's see what I can do here. I want to kind of bring this in. But yeah, um, the difference between the De La Rowney, uh, the, between acrylic inks, quote unquote, and uh, traditional inks, like Japanese um, pen inks and calligraphy inks, is traditional inks are made with dyes. That's why they're so vibrant in color. Um, and they, but the downside is that because they're dyes, they will bleed if they are wetted over the top. So using them as a, mixing th those in as a base for uh, priming would be very bad because you'd, you'd run the risk of it bleeding through your top layers. However, the De La Rowney stuff aren't true inks. They're actually washes made with super fine pigments. So uh, you can use them just like you would use paint, thin paint. By the same token, you could use the Reaper Clear Brights the same way. Just mix a little bit of a Clear Bright into uh, your primer, and you'd have a tinted primer. So that's a very abrupt fade on the sleeve, and I'm not sure I like it. I need to get in a little bit more, because I've got too much going on here. I need a little bit more um, Spirit Energy crossover to make it look more fadey. That's a little better. So the longer you stretch out your fade, the more evident that it's going to be that you are fading in. So if I decide that that's too close of a fade, I can grab more black and work it out farther on that arm so that I have more room to show that she's fading in. Oh, okay. Well, thanks, Ify. I didn't know if they were going to redo corporeal at any point. For the blend, are you applying a thinned wet coat? Yeah, on a dry coat. Yeah, this is not wet blending dark knot. Um, I do do a lot of spot wet blending when I paint, especially if I'm going fast. Uh, but usually it's going putting wet paint over dry coat. Uh, um, dragon, I, I don't bother with it. Uh, essentially, yes, you could do that. However, her face isn't going to have much of any glow really. It's cause this is all going to be non glowing. So her hood is behind her. There is a little bit of glow here, so you could do it. You just gotta be careful with it. Like it's, you really gotta tell me how strong your glow is. Um, so we'll see. I may go into that. It's gonna be very complicated though to do that. And I don't know that I can do it on this stream. Like, I don't know that I have the time. Like we'd have to do an entire, we'd have to paint her and then I'd have to go back and show you guys how I, how I figure out where the light is coming from and how strong it should be. The answer is it probably shouldn't be very strong, um, but we'll see. We'll see. I was more looking at uh, possibly um, just showing just showing you guys that the, what I'm most concerned about with this lesson is the fade. I'm not not worried about lighting. We're not. This is not an OSL effect except down here where I want to show you guys how you would do an OSL effect. So if I had made her all glowing, then you know this is all legal. Now we're messing around. Now we're showing how you how you fade something in from phantom or magical energy to being corporeal or from stone to flesh or things like that. So yes, you're right. She'd Her outside areas would be glowing. This part would not be glowing. And so yes, there would be directed light. However, the other thing is that there's really glowing energy all around her. So the other answer that you could use is you can use like this light teal color as lighting and just highlight her skin with that color. 
And that will give you the effect of, of a turquoisey pale glow hitting all parts of her. So if I'm going to highlight these areas, I'm going to do so with this. Because really, we, we can only paint the parts we can see, right? There could be a whole spectral nimbus of energy all around her casting a light all over her. And so then in that case, you use the really pale, like I would add even more white. I would add an off, make an off white from the Phantom Glow and use that to highlight everything. That's what I would do. Um, but yeah, if, if I were setting out to do an OSL lighting effect on a thing from the thing's peripheries, I probably wouldn't choose this model. I would choose a very specific model that made it a lot easier. <laughs> but yes, you are correct. Yeah, that's exactly. I said that a while ago, actually, Gurgi. This is also the same sort of thing you would do if you were trying to make a statue that was turn coming alive, like a living statue coming alive or a person being turned to stone. You would, you would essentially start by mocking in your stone areas and then you would start blending in to areas that were not yet stone or that were becoming flesh. Yeah, I mean, it shouldn't break your brain. I mean, the easy answer is there is light all around her because she is a spectral being. And so just highlight her as you would normally, but use a little bit of turquoise in your pale color, in your light color. Oh, yeah. I'm. Are you in Texas, Twisted Oma? I forget. Since it's, since it's hot, hot where you are. I'm going to bring this black out a little bit more. I want to, um, I want to blend it a little bit more. I want more, more room to blend. Because the more room we have to blend, the more we can carry this uh, fading effect. Like make it actually look fady. The shorter we do it, the harder it is. So I've thinned down my black a lot, but black has really good coverage. So I'm already getting, I'm still getting a little bit of streak. I'm not really getting a, a fade or a fady nice blend from this. If I want my black to layer really well, I need to thin it even more, but I'm not concerned because mostly I'm layering in my spectral glow. So I can go a little darker with the black. All right, so we've got that kind of laid out. Now we can see where, see how you, and if you make it a little irregular, then you can also kind of bring it in, make it look like. See, now it looks a lot. See, by making this edge irregularly, irregular and kind of going in peaks along the folds and stuff, you can certainly make it look more like it's fading out to spirit energy. See how that looks? And that's not even a smooth blend. So you don't even really need to be real smooth at this part to get kind of the effect. Uh, white washes. If you're trying to make something look like it's glowing from inside Time Buster, using a light wash can be very effective. But it's also difficult to make work. Austin, yeah, yep, yep. Yep, 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 yeah, that's, that's hot. So like if you want something to look like it's glowing from the inside, you could do a white wash, but doing light washes can be difficult. Getting it, getting it right, getting the amount of white and the amount of water balanced so that it brings out the effect you want can be a little bit difficult sometimes. I did that on Swampy Dragon. It looks like he's glowing inside of his mouth because uh, his cheeks are kind of translucent because I've got a lighter color in between the scales. Um, so one way to do that is with a wash or you can just paint it in. I tend not to use washes because they're a little haphazard. There are various, uh, there are exceptions to that rule. If the, it depends on the shape of the texture that I'm putting it over the top of. Like sometimes washes just kind of mess up stuff a little bit. So I won't use a wash. I'll just paint in where I want it. Yeah, Reaper sells bases. We had a, actually, we did a base uh, Kickstarter strange called Base Boss. So we have a ton of different types of bases, plastic bases. Now I'm going to take my uh, straight up Phantom Glow and I'm going to paint it a little bit over that black where I brought it in. Just a little. It's, uh, it's thinned down a fair amount, so it's uh, really going to fade out the black a bit, which is what I want. I want this to start looking like it's really fading together. Uh, yeah, I did Motor City Ray. I, I did a water weird, water weird. Oh, you shouldn't be scared to. They're really fun and easy. Go back and search for water weird, maybe on our YouTube videos and you should get it. Um, it actually turned out really well. And the water weird is one of my favorite transparent bones minis, but I give several tips for working on them. 
They aren't my favorite thing to paint. I, I really do love the water weird though, so that's why I did that one. But I'm unlikely to do another one. I think the water ones are, are possibly one of the most easy to do. Because where it's going to be lighter is usually where the water is foaming and then it's going to go opaque. I think the fire ones are very difficult to paint. I think um, in a lot of ways I would just leave the fire ones as is. Maybe put some orange in there. But that's just me. I mean, lots of people have painted them to good effect, so. Yeah, I mean, washes are an easy way to kind of learn, to kind of look at um, surfaces and think, okay, well, if I was, did this work and why didn't it, right? Because washes are, of, of course, going to be controlled by the surface and by gravity, whereas you have more freedom to create an effect if you're painting the paint on where you want it. But if you don't know where you want your paint, then yes, you absolutely start with washes and work with those. So I'm fading in that sleeve, and I think that's actually pretty successful at this point. Um, I may come in and bring that black in a little bit more, but I like that fade. It's, it's decent. It's not perfect, but it's decent. Um, I can take my spectral color and kind of highlight those folds that are coming in on her dress a bit. Maybe bring my highlight color in a little bit too and get the top of that. I want that color, I want that outer edge to be very light. So right now I can ac accentuate that with my lighter color. But yeah, maybe one of these days I'll paint something turning from stone to flesh. Like maybe if I can find a living statue. I think I may have, I thought about ordering the statues, the new um, Greek ones, which I really like. So that could be fun. Although they are kind of naked, so they'd be hard to do on stream. Try to keep everything family friendly. I guess we have non-naked versions. Or do we? I don't know. go um uh, yeah i mean but a little bit less right Gurgi? the thing is that that you know you'd still use the fade you'd still use layering um but there's a lot less of the glowing thing like you're not trying to it's it's not like you're trying to say that the mermaid part is transparent or incorporeal you're trying to just say it's a different surface so the painting mermaid is like painting anything else but if you want to make it look like the scales are blending into flesh then yes you should take some of your scale color and very lightly glaze it across the skin right where they're connecting yeah i mean washes are totally like you know doable i was more saying they were asking about washing with white and that's that's quite can be quite difficult to pull off right um, just because white is so opaque that getting it to the right uh, consistency can be challenging. Alrighty. Hmm. Hmm. I need to get that hair colored in. Yeah, welcome, Time Buster. I'm glad to see some of you guys. First timers or first time talkers. It's a good time. We like seeing new faces. And uh, never be afraid to ask a question, even if I've answered it already. There's often a lot of people who can still benefit from it, so rock it. I mean, a lot of painting is the same techniques, just being used in different ways. Or sometimes it'll be a way to think about a technique. So I'm going to use Succubus Kiss. I'm going to see if I can make her hair a Succubus Kiss, which is a really dark magenta and a pretty good base for a goth girl, uh, goth girl uh, red. That, that out of a bottle artificial red with purple shadows, almost purpley. So it doesn't cover very well, so I'm using it full strength. Um, it's really easy, Crowley. Dark Elf Skin, and actually I did, a, I did a PDF on this recently for my Patreon as well. This is time for me to plug my Patreon, obviously. Patreon.com slash painting big. Um, and I do a lot of PDFs. I did a PDF on Dark Elf Skin colors recently where I talked about all the different ways you could paint Dark Elf Skin. Uh, so if you're on my Patreon, I think I think it might even be a two dollar uh, PDF. I'd have to I'd have to go check, 
But uh, but yeah, essentially dusky skin is just a browner triad and dark elf skin is more purple gray. Um, there are many ways to paint dark elf skin. And uh, I had I had done the original dark elf skin triad and then I noticed that uh, Derek Schubert specifically liked to paint them with more of a brownish tone. He would use volcano brown, which is a purpley brown. So I decided to do another dark elf skin color to support that sort of painting because a lot of people asked him what colors he was using for his uh, dark elf skin. Thank you, Sidwee. I'm glad you like it. Yeah, go check it out. Go search for Dark Elf and you should be able to find it. It, it wasn't long ago, though. It was only uh, like a couple few months ago that I did that Dark Elf one. And I used 28 millimeter models to model the skin tones. And I used, uh, I used stuff that wasn't a triad meant for Dark Elf skin also. Just trying to get these little strands of hair and cover up all the underlying spectral color. Her uh, skin is still a little bit um, greenish, but we'll fix that. Mostly I'm trying to uh, get that hair color mapped in. Dark red. May 2020 for Dark Elf. Thank you, Dragon Eye. So yeah, not that many months ago, a few months back. But yeah, not only can uh, not only will that PDF talk about the differences, but it will show you a painted example uh, so that you can see the difference in uh, in the photos between the two. Yeah, that's an, one of the nice things about my Patreon is that I can do PDFs. They take a lot of time to do too between the writing and the editing and the uh, pictures. So sometimes the $2 tier gets videos and sometimes it gets PDFs, depending. Depending on the subject matter, whether I think it's better taught one way or the other. All right, so I've got my dark red hair kind of blocked in, which is very close to the black, so I don't have any contrast. Uh, yeah, I'm doing goth girl red, real JB. Uh, I decided to go that way to, to illustrate how you could do red hair, but not do it in a way that compromises the... Um, kind of the ideology of what you're trying to do. Like, she's a wraith, and uh, she's definitely dead, and so I, if I'm going to do red hair, I don't want to do a fiery red hair at all. So I'm going to go goth girl red instead and make it with that dark purpley red um, and bring it up in a different way. You can get behind goth girl red? Good. Me too. I like goth girl red. I always was terribly jealous of people who could, uh, who could dye their hair that color and look good in it. I used to go out to goth clubs, so uh, I, I was very, very non-color, non-goth colored myself, but I like to dance to goth industrial and an alternative. Alrighty, let's see here. Yeah, that's red. Oh, at the salon, it's called Cherry Cola Red. That's funny. And I'll have to look up pictures because I am going to have to need it. I'm going to need a photo reference for it when I get uh, to the highlights to uh, pull it off right. That's always advisable when you're trying to copy a hair color, by the way, people, is look up, look for somebody with that hair color and then figure out what paints will get you close to it. Otherwise, uh, you may not pull off exactly the effect you want. I'm putting just another layer of Succubus Kiss on here. So now you guys know yet another use for succubus kiss. Goth girl red hair. Or as they call it, apparently, in salons, cherry cola. Oh yeah, black cherry, that would that would also be good. Alrighty. Let's mix up our black. I need to get that monkey area under her neck. It's bothering me, so I need to get that delineation blocked in. So I'm picking up a bunch of black. Yeah, we might not get to the hair till, like if we decide to do this tomorrow. Mostly I wanted to show the fading effect, but if we want to keep going with her, we could uh, do one final day of wreath. So now I'm going to block in uh, the cloth here even stronger. Make sure that it's a nice solid coat. 
so that she is definitely a real real person ghost um, in some areas here. I'm going to make sure that I touch up the edges of this hood because they were definitely not. So now we've got a very solid look at the at the center there. Now our challenge is to make all of the outer areas fade like this. Um, so that we can get that definite appearance of fading in and fading out uh, that we are looking for. So I'm, I'm very happy. I'm pretty happy with this arm. So the next uh, thing to challenge to do is the other arm. And once again, I'm going to bring it out farther than I think I need it with a, with a like really thin stroke. Kind of feather it. This is very thin black, so I can get a, a nice diffused effect. Uh-oh. Dog sign. Okay, Justin, need you to ad lib. Kiri's got tail sign. Dog oh, emergency! No. Dog emergency. It's like it's like Mystery Science the Science Theater 3000. So how is everyone? How am I supposed to do that, Zambies? I can't paint. Pretty much just gonna. You, you want me guys to bore you guys with like tech talk? But like boring tech talk? <laughs> hey, Chibi, trust me, you don't want to do it. Neither one of us uh, can sing. That's uh, not something you want, I don't think. Uh, no, I cannot sing. Um, Mathophile, am I just a tech guy? I mean, I would say a majority of what I'm doing currently is is tech. It's it's uh, people will have ideas. They'll go, hey, I want that magic carpet right there to fly, and they want to know how to make that happen, and I'm I'm the guy. Um, outside of Kit, who does the website stuff, everything else is pretty much me. Um, as far as streaming and, and local IT goes, that is. Um, let's see here. You want me to tell dad jokes? Oh man, Twisted, that sounds terrible. <laughs> no one, will. I'd rather sing than that. Holy crap, even I don't read those. Yeah, it's 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 a lot of work, Chibi, but it's 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 something that I really enjoy, and I will say that um, basically having no it's it's an interesting and I've talked about this analogy. It feels like I'm building the road and walking the road at the same time, uh, and it's it's an interesting uh, it's an interesting way to work. It's I don't think I'm gonna get it pretty much anywhere else like this. Most places, you know, they've got all of the rails are predefined predetermined. I've got a I've got to chop the forest down and then run the rails and then ride the rails. So, but it, it's an adventure. That's for sure. I could talk warlord. That's actually not a bad idea. I do enjoy warlord. Uh, yes, crying. I am setting up the new studio. Correct. In fact, that's what my focus in the last week has been, has been designing the sky track system that we're using for lighting and potentially cameras. Uh, figuring out where I want all my, uh, and I've actually been in talks with Frank about it because Frank is, Frank has been my confidant when it comes to a lot of that stuff, and uh, it's it's been it's been laborious, I think, as it were. So it's, uh, but it's once again, it's fun. I can't wait till people take tours and see it because it's going to be cool. It's going to be very serious, almost like we're professionals, but don't tell anyone. Um. There's not a whole lot of a backstory, actually, Zambies. I will say that I started my first two or three years at Reaper were um, manual labor, basically, as far as my backstory for Reaper, right? Uh, were manual labor with uh, the previous floor manager. And then uh, one day, because at one point I had some background and I owned a company, actually, at one point before I sold off my half of it. But uh, I had background in video and, and stuff and 
they uh, decided to, to they wanted to open up the department that we have now now it's a streaming department it's all kinds of stuff and i've i've all, all also always been kind of low key it for reaper even back you know years ago at this point Trying to keep up with all these questions. You guys are you guys are popping off today. Um, let's see here. Uh, we're sticking with the well. The studio, honestly, twisted. The studio is going to look very professional, but it's going to look like something we kind of wandered into. I'll, I'll say it that. I'll, I'll put it that way. Oh yeah, and uh, Frank and I have some some fantastic conversations about tech. It's it's great. It really is. You know what? Just said I should have uh, Ruben take some. Although Dave has been taking pictures as it gets made, but I think as they start to put the like the the uh, soundproofing up and basically the studio glass up, that kind of stuff, they should they should get pictures of that before I start. You know. I don't know. I think we're going to have someone put it in the Skytrack system. If I have to put it in, you'll get pictures of me on a ladder, and that'll be fun. Because I'm not a big fan of ladders. Oh yes, Anne is back. Everyone. I'm back. So yes, yes. After the doglet the, uh, dog emergency, the uh, the the real entertainment is here. The the usher has <laughs> wandered on stage and found the microphone. Is now leaving the stage. <laughs> Let me see here. Tell us the backstory of Justin. <laughs> Alrighty, Kiri, settle down. You are not permitted to do twi twice in a day. Settle down. Thank you, Chibi Army. Yes. Let's see here. Yes, at least Chibi asked you good questions while I was gone. I'm just uh, reading through. Yes, if we like to surround our, um, we like to surround our our, our infrastructure with uh, with lots of professional oh, stuff. Oh yay! Hey, but roll to explode. Like, you know. Thank you for the raid there. Roll yes, I just got back because my dog had an emergency out. Everybody, hi, roll to explode. Hello, roll to explode raiders. Uh, welcome to the Reaper Pro Tips <laughs> toolbox thing that just got interrupted by my dog because old dog, and when she has to go, she has to go. So now we are going back to. Ta -da! Um, we are we are painting our wraith to look like she is becoming real or uh, conversely fading out into ethereal energy. So I started blocking in actual colors at her center and then I'm going to make the hood and the arms and the down here fade out into the spirit energy. So yeah, so we've essentially done this arm and I was just blocking in. You can see how rough my brush strokes are to block it in uh, the other side. And then I'll do the hood. Um, but yeah, so I really like this, uh, this female wraith. It's a, it's a dark heaven model. So it's actually metal and it's sculpted by Barbara Dolphy with, I'm sure some help from his uh, wife, Julie Guthrie or his partner, I should say. Um, they, uh, they tend to take on each other's sculpts a lot and I can definitely see some Julie influence on this one. Um, but yeah, she is a very pretty wraith. I really like her a lot. So we are, and that's kind of why I'm doing her in black is that I could do her as a ghost and do her much more, uh, you know, young and pretty and, and sad, but, uh, I think I wanted to do her kind of gothy. <laughs> so we went with goth girl red, um, for the hair We're we're bring, going to bring it up. And then we went with black for the clothes, traditional wraithy colors. Um, I haven't decided if she's evil, good, or just annoyed. She kind of just looks annoyed to me. Like somebody just stumbled into her graveyard and was doing not great things and she's just like you know what you are annoying mortal human so i'm gonna grab my black actually i need to thin it just a bit more black our black is very opaque it covers really well but that means that when you want it to thin down and do um more transparent effects it can be difficult you have to add a lot of water to it goth girls are always the answer <laughs> i was a goth girl who didn't look like a goth girl in high school and college My favorite band was The Cure, for reals. 
So yeah, there we go. We got a little bit thinner now. Now let's take our spectral, one of our, or rather phantom glow. I keep saying spectral glow, but it's not. But you could have used spectral glow, but no, we used phantom glow. Um, and I've got that kind of thinned down as well so that I can layer it over the top of the sleeve and kind of blend it in. And this is, as somebody asked earlier, this is wet onto dry blending, so layering. Um, I never like adding mediums uh, for layering purposes, Valandar. What I find, and it's just purely what you're accustomed to, Kiri, settle down. Um, but what I find is that when you add matte medium, you are changing the viscosity of the paint. You're changing some of its characteristics. So if, you, if you're going to do that, if you are going to add matte medium or any medium when you are thinning paint for layering, that's something you're going to probably want to do through your whole career. So, because you're going to get accustomed to how the paint acts, how the paint looks, the viscosity of it, the thickness, the transparency, how much you have to thin it. You're going to get accustomed to using that additive. It's going to change a lot. So it's a little bit goopier than most paint bodies. It's, you know, there's, there's reasons um, why it'll change kind of how the paint behaves. I mean, it's a medium, so it does change how the paints behave. That's the, that's the thing. That's what it does. It's meant to do that. Uh, so... It does, but in a particular way, which is why I said, you know, if you're going to do it, you're probably going to have to do it throughout your career. I've learned to do it this way. So for me, adding medium switches it up to a point where I don't like it. I don't know how much I need to thin my paint then. I have to, you know, pay attention again um, if I'm going to use it. And I don't, I don't like the way it feels, the paint body, how it changes the paint body. I don't like that feeling. I prefer water. But if you prefer medium, that's great. It's just the way that you're going to progress and the way that you're going to teach is going to change, right? Because when you tell people your formulas are going to be slightly different, they're going to they're gonna not need as much maybe for transparency or they're going to, you know, it's going to be different. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's not bad. It's just different. It's just the way you've chosen to thin your paint versus me. I just don't like it because of, like I said, it feels to me, it feels stickier, gooier when I do it. Um, like it's hard to define, but it's just, uh, just a very different effect, um, when I thin with any medium. Uh, too, too upbeat to be a goth, yes. Haha. <laughs> See, I always, I, I refused to dye my hair, so I was always kind of not, not quite a goth. I was an alternative girl. I did love the music. But yeah, so if you are, and actually, so Valandar brings up a good point. If you are used to adding a glaze medium or a, or a matte medium or something to your paint um, when you're doing layering like this, uh, I mean, that's something that that's, uh, you're going to get used to having to thin a certain way uh, th to a certain point. And you're going to find that if you don't have that medium with you and you try to do it with just water, that the answers to those questions, you know, how much thinning will it take and how will the paint act at this level are going to be different. Um because the paint is going to have more body at a thinner, more transparent level. So it's going to act a little different on your brush. And, and it's what you get used to. It's what you get accustomed to. Yeah, I was also a drama and music nerd. So, you know, and an art nerd. So yeah, Dragon Eye, I feel you. I was, I was a cross, uh, cross genre nerd. Um many different ways for Anne to not fit in in her high school and college career. So I'm bringing my um, my Phantom Glow up into the black now so that I can get that fade effect started. Um, and I'm going to judge, you know, where I might want the black effect to be heavier. You know, and I'm going to go back and forth probably just a little bit to make sure that I've got the effect that I want. Uh, no, I don't bother with distilled or deionized water. I just use tap. Um, scrying, I have, I've actually, I've talked about this before, but, uh, it really depends on where you live. So, uh, if your area has really hard water with a lot of minerals in it, um, or it's, uh, a, an area that has kind of bad water or older pipes that could introduce certain minerals into the, into the mix, then I'd recommend, you know, using distilled, um, I think deionized is really, I mean, I guess you can get it, but it's kind of overkill. I mean, you really just need filtered water at that point to take out some of that, that heavy stuff. Uh, normal tap water is fine for the majority of, uh, 
Well, and even, I mean, I've painted at my parents' house and they have well water and it's very, uh, they have to use a water softener, but I've never had problems with, uh, you know, with their water out of their tap when painting. Um, so if, but I do know, like I knew a painter who was in Manhattan and he had like old pipes in his building, old metal pipes. And so, yeah, he did use distilled water, like, especially with an airbrush, he didn't want build up. Um, stuff like that. So I just, you know, it really just depends on where you live. If, but if you live most areas of the world, or not of the world, I guess, of America, um, because a lot of areas of the world probably have really crappy water, um, then you shouldn't have to worry. But yeah, so kind of use it as kind of a, you know, can you drink your tap water and it's not gross, you know? Uh, do you need a water softener, um, you know, or is your water pretty good out of the tap, you know? Do you see a lot of mineral buildup on, like, you know places like pl plants that you're watering with tap water, use that as your judgment call for whether you want to switch to distilled or deionized. De um, but, you know, most people shouldn't need to, but if you want to, do it. It's up to you. Maybe you'll get better effects that way. There we go. Got a nice fade going on there. Yeah, if they add a lot of stuff to your water, then either use filtered water or use, you know, whatever you want. Spring water would work just fine, too. Any any water that's been, had a bunch of the hard stuff, like, taken out of it. I just hate telling people, like, I you all know I don't like absolutes. It's like, I hate people who will come up and say, oh, you must use distilled water or you're running this risk. And I'm just like, talk about clickbait, man. You don't have to. <laughs> I am the anti-clickbait, Anne. <laughs> so... It's, it's all a your mileage may vary. Try a bunch of stuff. Use your brain based on your own circumstances and try to find a style and way to thin that is fitting for you. Oh, for brush lickers. Oh, no. Yeah, I mean, I've got a I've got a Brita Pitcher. So if I really want to, but I don't even. I don't even hear. Like, not here and not in Texas. Uh, I didn't bother. I just used tap water for my... Just going to mark up a bit more. As I was mentioning on the arm, it really helps if you can kind of vary. You don't want to have this just straight line going down the hood. You want to kind of create the effect that there are wisps of energy that are longer than others. It'll help give you, it'll help give you a, um, a more interesting fading effect. So when you vary it up like that and make more long streaks, it helps make it really look like it is uh, energy. So like making kind of a flame pattern where some flame tongues are long and some are short um, can help give you the effect of... Uh, you could even do a swirling kind of pattern if you wanted to in some things. I might not with this, but I might with like a genie or something. Yeah, I mean, you know, try uh, try out stuff, but essentially anything that, like, makes it more difficult for you to sit down and paint, I'm generally against, unless it's necessary. Uh, because, really, the biggest challenge for anybody in this hobby is to just sit down and do it. Let's face it, right? Is butt in chair. That's the thing. People love to read about it or they'll watch videos, but actually sitting down and doing it can be the hardest thing to find time for your hobby. So I am kind of against anything that makes this hobby more complicated or makes you put off jumping in or things like that. I think I need to get a little closer. Um, I'm getting used to uh, being, there we go, way up close. Of course, this means that I cannot go off camera, so I have to be close. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm more in favor of things that make it easier to sit down and start. So things like uh, messing around with water or saying, oh, I really, I need to get more distilled water before I paint and things like that, that set up barriers to actually doing it. I don't like those things. Um, so it's really a, if it's necessary, do it. But if it's not necessary, don't make it harder on yourself. Don't make your setup even more elaborate so that it actually takes you longer to find sit time to sit down and paint. Yeah, with watercolors, definitely. And, and yeah, it's more about what it does to the paper, exactly, Ultra Squid, right? So I don't find that it's as important with our hobby. I mean, again, kind of use your brain. If you're having some weird effects, then maybe it is the water. Try to use some distilled water and see if it works. See if it helps. But in general, don't make it more difficult. Don't make it more difficult to sit down and paint.
it uh I'm kind of a wash and wear painter, I guess. Where it's just let's just go. Let's just go. Let's just do it. We'll pay the price later. So I got a little little streak, a little tongue of dark shadow there. This is looking kind of cool. I like how this is turning out. I kind of want to blend that one in a little bit. That tall one, that top one isn't going. Eh, you know, depends, Griggy. I could give her eyes like an energy. I could make them like solid black. Uh, I could make them solid white. It depends. Uh, if her skin, if her flesh is corporeal, I might go with a color. Um, I might go with this glow uh, in specific. I might make her eyes phantom glow and make do a glowing effect of that because it makes sense, right? She's that corporeal energy, that color. Her energy is this color, so her eyes would be that color um, if they have. Or I could go this color with an off-white and make a glowing effect. Uh, that's a that's really a creative uh, like creative license question though, Griggy. You could do it any any no, one of a number of ways. Let's see here. I'm gonna wipe out this long tongue of shadow by using my mixture of white and phantom glow. I want to make it a little shorter. So there we go. I like that a lot better. Excellent. Okay, yeah, Inara, I mean, that's exactly, that's a great example of what I'm saying, right? If you if you try it and you find that tap water definitely makes your palette kind of grungy and ucky, then you know that you want to use distilled, right? That's why I say try it, see. See if it gets you mileage. Then you know that it's necessary. Then you're not just complicating painting. You're actually making a choice that will give you better effects and less frustration. And that sometimes there's a fine line between those things, right? Because you don't know when you set out what's going to give you the most mileage. Um, so there will be some time wasted while you figure that out. I am just like bringing in some more pale white. I want, I want the outer edges to be pretty much pure white on this. I do need to make my white a little stronger. I made it, I thinned it way down and then I uh, lost the strength. Yeah, exactly. Test it, but don't spend too much time testing it or overthinking it. If you don't really see a benefit after a while and it's, you know, interfering with your painting process, then don't keep it. Ah, this white is getting very, very low and now it wants to clog. All right. Here, sit, stay, look pretty. While I unclog my white. Um, I don't think it's necessary to tie the mini together, Gurgi. I mean, like I said, I, I would like, you know, uh, tie the mini together. When I hear that statement, it's more like, um, I guess I'm used to seeing it in dioramas or in basing and miniatures. I already mentioned a little earlier that I would probably use a pale version of this turquoise color to highlight parts of her. Is if she's surrounded by spirit energy, then that would be that color that would really tie the mini together just fine. Um, so, I mean, and the other thing is remember if you make the eyes a solid color, you're definitely not conveying any human expression to her. She's definitely going to look like monstrous and otherworldly um you look inhuman when you don't have pupils so you've got to ask yourself what you're trying to do if you're trying to bring out her personality like her living personality with this corporeal part it argues that while you highlight everything else with the teal color you do give her a regular expression and regular eyes so you got to ask yourself that question first like what story are you telling here um if you're telling a story, you know, that she's maybe somebody's invaded her graveyard and she's coming back to corporeal life so that she can take them on, then I might give her uh, regular eyes just to give her an, an angry expression. Um, you know, if I'm looking more for the kind of, you know, angelic floating wraith thing kind of coming into existence and I don't really want to portray an expression, then yeah, I could go blank with the eyes. Absolutely. But at this point, I think I'm more likely to tie the model together Especially since I've already done a lighting effect. If somebody earlier, you know, brought up that it imploded their brain. <laughs> um, thinking about doing a lighting effect on all of this from the stuff around it. I'd be most likely to, to do that. To take this as my light color. Highlight the black. Highlight the hair with it. Highlight the skin with it. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
Dallas water was kind of like that too, MCC war. When you get down to the bottom of the reservoir, you definitely taste dirt in the water. Yeah, tie the mini together I most often hear with basing and, and the model. But you're right, I am going with two different, like, you know, ambience here, right? Two different things, because I'm ethereal and corporeal. So if I am going to worry about tying the model together, then yeah, I do, I do need to use some of the spectral glow here and there. It's a valid point. But I just don't know, on the eyes, it really is a question of do I want her to look more human? Or do I want her to look very inhuman? And you could go either way. Yeah, I mean, it's a different, it's, it's, you look soulless, right? If you've got like just those glowing eyes, you look like otherworldly, definitely. So you've got to ask yourself what you're doing, what story you're telling, and what will enable that story. I'm going to use my, um, I'm going to add some white to my skin color and see if I can get her skin a little stronger now. Um, honestly, just add water. If you've got an agitator in there, in our, I just add a little few drops of like water. Um, sometimes I'll add a little, a couple drops of flow improver with that. Um, but yeah, I'll usually just open the top and usually you want between 10 and 20 drops of water. Keep in mind that, um, you are dealing with, uh, you know, about 350 to 400 drops of paint per bottle. So you don't want to add a lot. You just want enough to get it back to where you want it. I would add 10 to 20 drops. I would just get a, a you know, a dropper bottle that you can just drop water into it with. Uh, use a toothpick or something if it's really gloopy. If it's not really gloopy, it should come back with just the agitator. If you want to, you can add extra agitators if you've got extra glass beads or other agitators. Um, and that will help it agitate faster. Uh, especially if it's a very gloopy, if it's gotten very gloopy, then adding some, uh, multiple agitators can help. Like when I, if I'm working with a Vallejo paint or something like that, that's thick, I'll add three or four different agitators because I'm going to add water to it right out the bat. And I want it to, cause I want to thin it down in the bottle. And, uh, so for me that, you know, the extra agitators help to help to get that goop all mixed in and, and, uh, integrated faster. But yeah, what I did with my old, uh, what I do with my old paints is if they get, if they get goopy to the point where they're annoying me, um, as I will actually add, just open up the top, add water, shake up, test. Let's make some of this black energy fade in a little bit by using, coming at it from the opposite direction. And I might lose some of it. This is the dead. This is kind of a difficult part up here. I've got to get that fade. I've got all those nice strands of energy that I kind of want to keep, but I do need to fade it out. Oh yeah, definitely eat. Thank you for the raid rate roll to explode. We really appreciate it. I hope everybody's having fun. Yeah, no problem. Let's see here. Oh well, yeah, it's almost time for me to wrap it anyway. I'm just trying to get this hood to a place where I like it. Like, I like this sleeve, I like that sleeve. Um, but here, the problem up here is that I've got these nice artistic strands that I've painted on. I actually really like them and I kind of want to keep them. So my question is, can I fade them in enough but not lose the kind of tendrils of energy that I have going there? Because I kind of really like it. Of course, the downside is it kind of looks like hair almost. Uh, so I don't know if I want that. Um, you know, that might not be good for me. Got to kind of figure out what I want to do. Put a little bit more black in there. Make my black really solid toward the edge of the hood. Oh, there we go. Doop. There we are. So I'm going to just try to fade out the very ends. Yeah, using like a stone bead that's not... Um, non-reactive i still much as lots of people are using stainless steel now because they can get good grade stainless steel pellets i just inherently have a dislike of that i would rather use a non-reactive stone or glass for my agitator beads so i'm just pretty much feathering some of this uh 
phantom glow into the black again to make it a little more pale just so I can get that fade effect fading in. So I can keep a little bit of my little ghostly tendrils there, but take, uh, take some of it out. Much as I like them, it's, I, if I do it up here, I'd have to do it the rest of these places. I don't know that I want to, so that means fading it. Much as I like it. Sometimes you do something and you like it, but you realize that it doesn't fit what you want to do on the rest of the model, and then you just kind of have to table it and say, all right, well, I'm going to remember I like this effect, and so on another mini, I'm going to do it. It's like killing your darlings in writing. It's like when you've got a scene that you really like, but you realize you really need to cut. So you just kind of save it and go, I'll do something like this in a future book. Maybe this just isn't the right place for this. So now I've got, I've faded out a lot of that now. I may have lost too much of it. We'll see. It can be hard to blend from black to really light on uh, a broad surface like this. It means usually a lot of very thin layers to try to get a nice faded in effect. Yeah, exactly. See, Scrying Eye, that is why I tell people not to use it. Like, there's a couple companies out there now who are putting out quote-unquote stainless steel beads, and I'm just like, um, do you know that's not gonna ruin something? Because, I don't know. I just don't trust it. I could be just being old and crotchety on that. But the fact that it has happened to you makes me go, yeah, well, that's why I'm old and crotchety on it. I am justifiably old and crotchety on, crotchety on this. All right. Doo -doo. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Keeping a notebook and, you know, writing down stuff. Because that can be uh, very helpful. A painting journal of sorts. Then you, the nice thing about keeping like a painting journal like that is if you do a little like paint sketch of the effect, uh, then you can just use your painting journal later. You can just page through it to look at the different effects that you've done over time and uh, maybe get inspired on a new model. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, our brains are all taken up with all this other stuff. Everybody's got a shortage of brain RAM and brain, brain hard drive space. Like, I really need some, some new brain RAM, I'm pretty sure. That's, is that working? Let's look. Yeah, I think that's kind of working. It's not as faded in as I would like it to be yet, but it's all right. So I'll sit there. I'm going to see what I can do down here. I might need to bring my black down a little bit lower to get the correct fade here. Again, the more, the more area that you have to, to blend over, the, the easier it is to make these things fade together. So if we bring our black down a little bit more in places, that will give us the tools to uh, do more of a fade down there. Yeah, I wish they could just do that. Just slot some new brain ram in, right? Yeah, often I don't really mark down colors, but that's because I've got a pretty good eye for what I would need to mix. Unless it's a really complicated formula, but this is why I try to avoid complicated formulas, why I usually advise people. If you're going to do a mix, try to make it a mix of only two colors or two colors plus white or two colors plus black. So that is very easy to figure out what you did. Um, if you keep it simple, it's easier to get it to match down the road when you come back to it, if you put it away for a little while. That's coming along. Now, one thing you do need to do is make sure that you've got a nice solid black at the core of things so that the fade is uh, definite, definitely a fading effect and not a, uh, just, you know, I didn't finish base coating effect. <laughs> Hmm. 
All right, that's coming along. That's coming along. She's getting there. Yeah, and yet the crap that you don't need is the stuff that sticks, right, Max Styles? Like, you know, your address, like when you were a kid, <laughs> that your parents made you memorize, still sticks in your head decades later, and, you know, you can't remember, like, the uh, name of the person that you just met who you really need to remember. So I don't want to go all the way here. I uh, want to leave some spiritual energy in here. Definitely, but I do need the room to make the fade work, so. Yeah, or dialogue from old movies, yes. Mystery Men, Ghostbusters. I'm uh, pretty horrible about Ghostbusters quotes at times. Imminently quotable movie. Some movies are just really quotable. Can't help it. It's not our fault. Commercial jingles from childhood. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. I am bad on those. It is weird what our brains glom onto. Although commercial jingles, the evil, the evil advertising departments were trying to make those catchy. So unfortunately, that means they simply succeeded in their horrible task. Yeah, exactly, Max Stiles. Just what I just said. Exactly. Yeah, image. That's funny. Yeah, I know the the cell phone definitely does take a, a load off of us having to remember things, but sometimes I think we get out of practice remembering things because we have our cell phones and we don't have to. Like, I'll be darned. I can remember my old house phone number, but I'll be darned if I can remember David's cell phone number because I never dial it. I just hit David or I message him. So, you know, it's just like, well, that would be useful to have his phone number memorized in case I ever needed it and didn't have my phone, but oh well. The brain ram does not think so. The brain hard drive is not, is not uh, cooperating with me. Mm, let's see here. How much fade do I want? I still need. Yeah. Hmm. Just trying to figure out where I want these uh, highlights to go. How much? Uh, how much I want to fade out the black and make it interrupt it with more folds so that it looks a little more ghostly the more you can break it up the better so we're getting on there i might have to do this tomorrow to do the skin so we're getting in some some uh, lighter streaks there lawful evil yeah alrighty so yeah so you guys can see how I'm kind of bringing that black in we just have to work more with the skin and the hair I think and then with highlights um, to see how those are going to be playing in to see if we can retain our uh, our ghostly elements while highlighting part that is supposed to be non-ghostly. It's very interesting. This is a very interesting sort of project because it makes you really think about what makes something have mass when you paint it as opposed to not. You know, like if I put too much of a shadow there between the skin and the cloth, it's going to come off as lining and then it's going to suggest mass because remember lining is the most elementary and simplistic form of shading. So I have to avoid that line. I have to block it out because otherwise it doesn't look right. 
Um, I'm probably going to highlight it with my Spirit Energy color in Aura, so I am going to bring it up with more teal. But I'll have to be pretty, um, I'll have to think about what, what the fabric is and how much light it would have hitting it from all of everything around it. I'll probably make my highlights very small. Black, if you want black to stay black, you have to have your highlights be very small. Um, or if you're going to do a broader highlight, you need to go very close to black with your broader highlight. Uh, waffle evil. Yeah, well, you know, waffles are pretty evil if you're a pancake person. Like, that's the, the infinite debate, right? Lunch! Have fun with your lunch, scrying eye. I also am getting hungry. Waffle evil. So, like, okay, now we need to make up names for all the rest of everything. Like, okay, so we've got waffle good and waffle evil. Obviously, that's pro and anti-waffle contingencies. I'm now thinking of a fantasy world where waffles and pancakes do battle with each other. Uh, let's see. Waffle Evil will be the super cheap frozen waffles. <laughs> Carrot neutral. <laughs> it would make more sense for a different breakfast item to be, like, neutral, though. Although I don't- I can't think of a food thing that sounds, like, chaotic. Chaotic, I guess. Chaotic Evil. Or chaotic neutral. Chaotic sausage. Quichotic neutral. Oh, oh, I love it, GVD. Uh, yeah, it's a stretch, but it's awesome and terrible at the same time. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Uh, we could make up an awful fantasy world that would make everybody hate us. It would be so much fun. Hmm. Trolling the GMs out there. Alrighty, I think I, I wanted to go a little bit over because of the Kiri emergency, but now we are, uh, we're pretty well along. We've, we've blended in a lot of this. This one needs more blending, these streaky layers over here. Although again, I'm liking the streakies up here and now I'm liking the streakies down there. I've still got kind of streaky here, so I'm not worried about getting rid of too much of my streakiness. I actually kind of think it's neat and stylistic. Um, so maybe I'll add some streaks to this one to be more in line with this and this and that. Um, this also has a little bit of streakiness going on. So you could do it either way, right? You could, you could go for that smooth fade or you could do this streakiness like that can suggest that she's, uh, that got spirit energy sweeping. It makes it more of a sense of motion, right? Like this is more diffused. Like she's just slowly like fading into reality. Whereas this really does suggest the motion of the energy like that is churning or something. So again, think about what effect you are looking for with the model. And if the character of the model should really reflect what you choose. So if she's being very offensive, if she's like coming back into her corporeal self so she could take on interlopers in her graveyard or adventuring parties, in other words, um, then you may want to do a streak thing because it's more active, right? Whereas if you're trying to do the diffused maiden like coming into existence to answer a question or give a quest, then maybe you want to go with a more fading thing because that's more passive, right? It's less active. So... Think about that and shapes too, and how they Im how they uh, really do impact the character of the model, right? It's all is this is all cool stuff you can do to make kind of a, what could be a very boring model more interesting, right? This is all about the character. Chaotic Gouda, Gouda, uh, Gouda can be pretty chaotic if it has weird stuff in it. But otherwise, I think Gouda is very neutral, very neutral cheese. Smoky Gouda maybe would be a little chaotic. Croissant, croissant evil. I think he's, I think I still like the Keyshotic evil. <laughs> oh dear. Alrighty, alrighty. So any questions real quick before I uh, I call it today? I think tomorrow I do wanna do I wanna do work on the skin, on the hair, and then maybe highlight we can play with highlights on this and see how we might highlight it all to make it look together and yet still retain the whole feel of something solid versus something not solid. Um but yeah, we can we can totally play with this mini again tomorrow. Are we fighting monsters? Oh, that's terrible! All right, quick, everybody, like run. <laughs> you could not, and you're a GM too, because your name says you are. That's just terrible. Your players are like losing XP just from their brain cells that they lose <laughs> when you say things like that. Alrighty. 
Everybody looks like pretty good. Yeah, I think she's coming along well. I'm, I'm pretty happy with her so far. I think that maybe I need a little more variance. She is a little bit, um, where's my light paper? I had my light paper around. Maybe my blue will work. Hold on. Let me see if I can shove this out of the way while Justin looks for a raid for us. Uh, all right, Actually, so let's... I have uh, one of two here. We can do no, that looks we terrible. can do Dysus. We have a Dysus? We've been reading Dysus a lot lately. Yeah, see, I've got to find a different... This, these are all color shifting too much. I need a piece of white paper. I'll have to grab some, grab one for tomorrow. Oh, wait, maybe I have it. There, haha. -ha. Um, but yeah, I'm up for Dysus. She's cool. Uh, so, all right. So, yeah, so she's... I got to find... I probably need to grab some lighter gray paper. Um, you see how it changes, how the camera perceives everything, right? So I get the best color variance here, but she's still a bit darker in person. There's a bit more variance in this turquoise than we're getting on camera. So... We'll have to work with it and see what we can do. All righty. Raid Mocha. Nomad Zeke wants us to raid Mocha instead. Um, but, uh, yeah, we can, we can do Dysis. We can, we did raid Mocha a couple times last week. So, so we, uh, we have given Mocha love. We actually raided Mocha on when we had a big, big stream. So. That's true. I forgot. We, is she the one who got the, uh, the massive, the massive stream? Yeah. Mocha got the massive stream when we had hundreds of people in. Yep. After C not raided us. All right. Well then, uh, let me start the raid. All right. Dice is, is doing chibis. Well, chibi will love that. And thanks for tuning in everybody. And yeah, we'll do this. We'll do this mini tomorrow. Um, I'll try to find a backdrop that shows her colors a little bit better. The black is showing up just fine with the teal. I just think we could get a better, sense of the teal so we'll see if i can find a, a different background zambies you take care too have fun have fun bye everybody have a good time we'll talk to you later adios thank you guys very much don't forget we have miniature monday this afternoon at 3 p.m central um as always spread the reaper love keep being awesome and we will see you guys later thank you very much